Well, the 16th BRICS summit has taken place in Russia. You have around 20,000 delegates from over 30 countries who uh, attended the three-day international forum in Kazan, including the Iranian President Masoud Pazeshkian. Now, this summit is a big deal. Each and every one of them has been, coming at a time of major geopolitical shifts that have been in the making for some time. Let's take a look at some of the statements that were made at this summit. First, we're going to start out with Masoud Pazeshkian, Iran's president, who said, I call on all members to use their collective and individual capacities to end the war in Gaza and in Lebanon. The Chinese president, Xi Jinping, calling for deeper financial, economic cooperation among BRICS members. There's a lot more statements coming from the Chinese side, but that was one of the important ones. Narendra Modi, India's president, had a very good meeting with Iran's president, and he said that Masoud Pazeshkian uh, was one who reviewed full range of relations between both countries. The South African president said, we continue to see Russia as a valued ally. Then we have uh, Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. BRICS is a breakthrough in advancing the interests of all of its members, particularly in trade. Membership of the BRICS has expanded well beyond the initial five members. Taking a look at uh, some of the countries that are coming up, well, the major ones, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Uh, now the term BRICS Plus is used, which uh, has Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, and the UAE officially to have joined in 2024. More than 40 countries have expressed an interest in membership, including NATO member Turkey and also Indonesia. The current BRICS member countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Ethiopia, Egypt, Iran, and the UAE, they collectively represent 46% of the world's population and over 30% or 36% of the global GDP. The BRICS countries account for 35% uh, of the global GDP. Now we're going to make a comparison with the G7. The G7 itself comes in at 30%, so the, there's a bit of a difference, as you see there, showing the improvement of BRICS. Also in terms of, uh, let's look at the purchasing power parity uh, by the end of 2024, 20, 20, uh, 36.7%. That uh, greatly exceeds the share of the G7 countries, which comes in at 30%. Well, BRICS countries also control a lot of uh, major natural resources like oil, uh, coming in at uh, the percentage of 44%. These are some of the other ones that you see, like 80% of rare earth metals, 72% um, of titanium, 50% of wheat, 55% of rice harvest, which means that they play a crucial role in the market for food and resource security of the entire world. Well, the bloc's BRICS pay system has officially been unveiled at the collective's business forum in Moscow. The BRICS bloc has sought increased financial autonomy. Specifically, they have looked to increase de-dollarization in an effort to lessen international reliance on Western currencies. Specifically, it allows increased local currency trade and challenges the U.S. dollar dominance.